Здравствуйте! Привет! Как дела? Надеюсь, что все в порядке. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. Давайте поговорим о том, что мы с вами сделали в прошлый раз. Let's discuss what we did last time. We talked about colors, using them in masculine, feminine, neuter and plural form. You can apply all of that to any adjective at all. Take something like хороший, good, and you're going to have masculine form. Хороший друг, good friend. Хорошая книга, good book. Хорошее, with an IE ending, слово, good word. Хорошие люди, good people, etc. That's one concept. Another one was simply being comfortable with introducing people, meeting people for the first time, saying just plain nice things like, how are you, good to meet you, etc. Хорошо. Кроме того, в конце прошлого урока мы с вами разобрали другой диалог. We also took a look at another dialogue in the begin at the end of last lesson. That dealt with nationalities and also where do you live type of things. Хорошо? We are going to look at both dialogues at the beginning of this lesson once again. We are going to take great pains in learning everything about saying correctly things such as where you're from, uh, etc. And then go on to where do you live, where do you work later on, etc. Хорошо. Ну что ж, давайте начнем с первого диалога. So let us begin with the first dialogue. We will look at it for the last time. That's the one that deals with simply meeting people. Let's do a review. Here it is. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Давайте познакомимся. Давайте. А меня зовут Татьяна. Меня зовут Линда. О, очень приятно. Очень приятно. А вы знаете, кто это? Я не знаю. А, извините, пожалуйста. Что? О, простите, пожалуйста. А, давайте познакомимся. Давайте. А, меня зовут Татьяна. Меня зовут Мишел. Меня зовут Линда. Очень приятно. Очень приятно. Очень приятно. Очень приятно. А, вот мы и знакомы. Вы Мария? Нет, нет, нет. нет О, нет. извините. Меня зовут извините. Мишель. Мишель. Извините, я ошиблась. Вы Мишель, вы Линда, а я Татьяна. Да. Очень приятно. Будем знакомы. So, the bottom line of that dialogue is clearly очень приятно. Extremely useful stuff, actually. So, the next thing is basically a continuation of this dialogue. It deals with things like кто вы по национальности, where you're from, literally, what's your nationality, где вы живете, where do you live, etc. Take a look at it, and then we'll go through it. Мишель, а кто вы по национальности? Вы американка? Да, я американка. Вы, а вы, а я русская. Да. Я по национальности русская. Хорошо. А вы, Линда? Я американка. И ваши родители американцы? И ваша бабушка и дедушка um, американцы? Нет. Um, моя бабушка Полька. А, Полька. Mm -hmm. um, а моя дедушка Дедушка. Немец. А, очень интересно. У вас в семье немцы, поляки и американцы. Очень интересно. Да, да. А где вы живете, Мишел? Um, вы живете в Далласе? Да. Я живу в Далласе. А ваша семья тоже живет в Далласе? Нет, нет. Моя сестра живет в Чикаго. И моя брат живет в Атланте. Ваш брат живет в Атланте? Да. А, да. А понятно. Где? А я живу в Далласе, и мой муж, и мой сын тоже живут в Далласе, но моя мама, и мой брат, и моя сестра живут в России, в Москве. А -а -а. Я из России. Я сама из России, из Москвы. Хорошо. Хорошо. А, Линда, а вы живете где? Um, я живу в Далласе, 
Вы же тоже живете в Далласе, как и Мишель. Да. А ваша семья тоже живет с вами в Далласе? Да. А, моя сестра... Ваша сестра oh. не живет с вами? Uh, uh, say that again. А где живет ваша сестра? А где живет ваша сестра? А, вот это А, да. Моя сестра живет в форт А, ваша сестра живет, но она тоже в Техасе? Да. А, понятно, понятно. Но это недалеко. So in this dialogue we have gone through some things that you will probably find the most useful dealing with people from Russia and if you yourself go you will find that to be the first thing that you are being asked about. Кто вы по национальности? Откуда вы? Where are you from? Где вы живете? Где вы работаете? Where do you live? Where do you work? Etc. Хорошо? Это самое полезное. Ну что ж, а теперь давайте мы с вами этот весь диалог разберем на части. Now we're going to take this entire dialogue apart. Let's take a look at the first. Кто вы по национальности? That национальности, 3, 4. Национальности. По национальности means by nationality. Who are you by nationality? In better English, what's your nationality? Вы американка? Are you an American? American cutter at the end means that you are addressing a woman. Okay? Хорошо. The next. Да, я американка. Yes, I am an American woman. А вы? The psychotic sounding. А вы? Very high rising. Хорошо. And you? And the next. А я по национальности Русская, that's the complete phrase, and I, by nationality, am Russian. She could have also said, а я русская, and I'm Russian. А вы Линда, and you Линда, it really sounds like that. А вы Линда, once again, а вы Линда, я американка, I'm an American. And the next question, и ваши родители американцы? Американцы. That's the plural. Хорошо? Americans. Please note that I'm not capitalizing nationalities. Русский, американец, канадец, мексиканец, the languages as well, they're not going to be capitalized. Хорошо? So, and your родители, parents, and your parents are Americans, meaning two. И бабушка, и дедушка, both grandmother and grandfather, бабушка, 34. бабушка, дедушка, и бабушка, и дедушка, хорошо, and she actually cares to answer that question, she says, нет, моя бабушка, полька, полька, Polish, feminine form, so my grandmother is Polish, а мой дедушка, немец, немец, German and my grandfather is German. Хорошо. And the last thing in this quick exchange was, oh, это очень интересно. Интересно. Interesting. Интересно. Это очень интересно. 3, 4. Это очень интересно. That's very interesting. У вас в семье, in your family, есть there are Немцы, Germans, Поляки, Poles, Polish people, и Американцы, and Americans. Хорошо. Ну что ж, once again, let's take a look at that last phrase. У вас в семье есть и Немцы, и Поляки, и Американцы. Очень хорошо. That's the first part that we're going to look at. I'd like to make a few quick notes about that. Uh, this whole idea of we have Poles, Germans and Americans doesn't quite work very well in American context, does it? I mean, second generation, you're already Amer American. Or, I am Russian, but my daughter is American. It doesn't always work that way in Russia. People tend to think of themselves as Ukrainians, Ukrainian, uh, Kazakh, 
a Kazakh or something like that, for generations and generations, being a part of so-called Russia didn't do much to change that. And uh, if there are some old animosities between some of those people, you can see how they play out sometimes. A good example of that would be the former Yugoslavia. We always thought of those people, hey, they're Yugoslavian. They didn't think that way. So, same idea in Russia. So, maybe you wouldn't always want to ask somebody, кто вы по национальности? Okay? You could substitute that кто вы по национальности with something else. So, let's look at that first phrase first. Кто вы по национальности? Okay? Instead of that, you could use another phrase. And that is, откуда вы приехали? Where from you arrived? Where are you from? Хорошо? If you're talking to somebody who seems to be out of place, like a guy with a really bad Russian accent in Texas. Хорошо? Uh, and the answers to that could be things like Я из Америки. I am from America. You could say Я американец. I am an American. Or Я из Америки. From America. We've seen that structure before. Хорошо? Or it could be Я из России. Я из России. Хорошо? I'm from Russia. Or Я из Далласа. I'm from Dallas. Хорошо? Or maybe Я из Москвы. I'm from Moscow. Я из Москвы. Хорошо? So, with that in mind, we have another thing to review, and that's nationalities. Here's the way you're going to say American, depending on the person that you're talking to. If it's a guy, you're going to say Американец. Or if you're talking about yourself and you're a guy, you'd say Я Американец. That's masculine. Next one, Американка. That's feminine. Plural of either guys or girls mixed with guys there would be Американцы. However, if you've got just, let's say, two girls who are American, you're going to call them Американки. Kind of confusing, but that's just how it works. Let's look at it once again. Американец. Американка. Американцы. And just for girls, the plural is Американки. Хорошо. And this is how you say Russian. A guy would be Русский. Хорошо, a girl, русская. And a plural in any combination whatsoever is русские. So those are the русские. Хорошо. Русский, русская, русские. Отлично. We also had German and Polish there in the dialogue. A guy is a немец. A girl, немка. A Pole would be поляк for a guy. Polka for a lady. And also we've got Mexican and Canadian. Those are very easy to deal with, just like Americanets. For a guy we've got Mexicanets for a Mexican guy. Хорошо? And then Mexicanka, feminine form. A Canadian Canadiet, masculine. Canadka, feminine. Очень хорошо. Well, that's it for the nationalities. Once again, I broke the explanation up into two parts so that you could actually see it again right now. Listen to the dialogue once again, review what we have gone through and prepare for working on what's still ahead. So please look at this entire dialogue once again. Um, Michelle, а кто вы по национальности? Вы американка? Да, я американка. И вы? А вы? А, вы, а я русская. Да. Я по национальности русская. Хорошо. А вы, Линда? Я американка. И ваши родители американцы? И ваша бабушка и дедушка американцы? Um, нет. Um, моя бабушка полка. А, полька. Mm -hmm. а. Um, uh, Моя дедушка. Дедушка. Немец. О, очень интересно. У вас в семье немцы? 
поляки и американцы. Очень интересно. Да, да. А где вы живете, Мишел? Um, вы живете в Далласе? Да. Я живу в Далласе. А ваша семья тоже живет в Далласе? Нет, нет. Моя сестра живет в Чикаго. И моя брат живет в Атланте. Ваш брат живет в Атланте? Да. А, да. А понятно. Где? А я живу в Далласе, и мой муж, и мой сын тоже живут в Далласе. Но моя мама, и мой брат, и моя сестра живут в России, в Москве. А -а -а. Я из России. Я сама из России, из Москвы. Хорошо. А, Линда, а вы живете где? А, я живу... В Далласе, в Вы же, тоже живете в Далласе, как и Мишель. Да. Да. А ваша семья тоже живет с вами в Далласе? Да. А, моя сестра... Ваша сестра oh. не живет с вами? Uh, uh, а где живет ваша сестра? А где живет ваша сестра? А, вот это А, да. Моя сестра живет... А, ваша сестра живет, но ну, она тоже в Техасе. Да. А, понятно, понятно. Но это недалеко. Now let's look at the second part of this dialogue in detail. There it comes. Где вы живете? Where do you live? Где? The d. Remember the softening of d into z. There it is. You use the где all the time. And make it sound good. Где? 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 Sort of sounds like an Australian saying где? 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 All right. Где вы живете? Where do you live? Вы живете в Далласе? Once again, you've got a question without a question word. Sounds like very rising in for, uh, intonation. Где вы живете? Вы живете в Далласе? And the next. Да, я живу в Далласе. Yes, I live in Dallas. Хорошо, the next question. А ваша семья тоже живет в Далласе? And your family also lives in Dallas? And does your family also live in Dallas? In Russian we don't have that do you, etc. We simply change the intonation and you come up with a question rather than an answer. So, а ваша семья тоже? Живет в Далласе. Хорошо. And the answer. Моя сестра живет в Чикаго. Чикаго. А мой брат живет в Атланте. А мой брат живет в Атланте. Моя сестра живет в Чикаго. А мой брат живет в Атланте. Очень хорошо. Так, ну что ж, едем дальше. А следующее. And now there comes a revelation from Tanya in the dialogue. А я живу в Далласе. And I live in Dallas. И мой муж, и мой сын тоже живут в Далласе. And my husband and my son also live in Dallas. Previously we had моя семья, семья feminine, моя. Feminine form of the possessive pronoun. Here it's муж, сын. Two masculine nouns, we take a мой to match them. Хорошо. And then, следующее. Но моя мама и мой брат и моя сестра живут в России, в Москве. But my mom and my brother and my sister live in Russia, in Moscow. So, моя мама feminine, мой брат, my brother, моя сестра, my sister, live in Russia, in Moscow. Очень хорошо. Uh, then there was another interesting part. Ваша сестра не живет с вами. Your sister does not live with you. С вами, with you. That's a case we haven't learned, but you've got to be able to use it. Just remember, с вами meaning with you. And the answer, нет, она живет в Форт-Уорте. Форт 
worthy. Must be for it worth. So, no W in Russian, instead we have to say uh, UO or something like that. Хорошо? In fact, Dr. Watson turns out to be, depending on where you read it, either Dr. Watson or Dr. Watson. So, the differences in pronunciation dictate that. Очень хорошо. So, now we've gone through the whole thing. I want you to have it reinforced by seeing this dialogue once again. Here it is. Um, Мишель, а кто вы по национальности? Вы американка? Да, я американка. И вы? А вы? А, вы, а я русская. Да. Я по национальности русская. Хорошо. А вы Линда? Я американка. И ваши родители американцы? И ваша бабушка и дедушка американцы? Um, нет. Um, моя бабушка... Полька. А, Полька. Mm -hmm. а. Um, а моя дедушка... Дедушка... А, очень интересно. У вас в семье немцы, поляки и американцы. Очень интересно. А где вы живете, Мишел? Um... Вы живете в Далласе? Да, я живу в Далласе. А ваша семья тоже живет в Далласе? Нет, нет, моя сестра живет в Чикаго, и моя брат живет в Атланте. Ваш брат живет в Атланте? Да. А, да. А понятно. Где? А я живу в Далласе, и мой муж, и мой сын тоже живут в Далласе, но моя мама... И мой брат, и моя сестра живут в России, в Москве. А -а -а. Я из России. Я сама из России, из Москвы. Хорошо. А, Линда, а вы живете где? А, я живу в Далласе. Вы в жив... тоже живете в Далласе, как и Мишель. Да. А ваша семья тоже живет с вами в Далласе? Да. А, моя сестра... Ваша сестра oh. не живет с вами. Um, uh, а где живет ваша сестра? А где живет ваша сестра? А, вот А, да. Моя сестра живет в форт А, ваша сестра живет, но она тоже в Техасе. Да. А, понятно, понятно. Но это недалеко. Okay, well, we've been having so much fun with these two dialogues that we don't have much time left. There's one quick thing that I'd like to tell you about, though. Uh, we keep talking about gestures, body language and such. There is one basic thing that underlines it all, and that is distance between the people when they speak. Russians tend to be a lot closer than just the arm's length when they talk to one another. Okay? It works for men, women, children, older people, everybody. I guess the idea is that they used to living in a lot tighter environment. The apartments are smaller. So when they talk, they get really close to you. And you may get a little bit uncomfortable. Then they also talk really loudly for some reason. Russian sounds like a very intense language. And that's just how it is. So uh, another thing is, People shake hands an awful lot. Every morning you will have guys at work, for example, saying hello and shaking hands, not just when they meet each other for the first time. Okay? We'll get back to that later. There's one more thing that I'd like to talk about, and that is a particular saying. Uh, here it comes. Из двух зол выбирай меньшее. Literally, out of two evils, choose the lesser one. So when you've got two bad things happening, go ahead and pick the one that doesn't seem as bad. Uh, I was thinking about the dialogues when I put that there. So let's go ahead and look at it once again. The first part of it is из двух зол from two evils, and then the second part выбирай меньшее, choose the lesser one. I'm not going to quiz you on those. They're just there mostly for fun. Хорошо. And uh, you will see something at the beginning of next lesson. It is going to be a new dialogue. 
at the beginning of next lesson we will actually go through it in detail. At the end of this lesson you will just get to see and hear it to get prepared for it. Here's the dialogue. Мишель, можно вас спросить? Да, пожалуйста. Мишель, а кто вы по профессии? Я учительница. О, а что вы преподаете? А, я преподаю а, театр. Театр? Театр, а. да. А, русский, русский язык, английский. А. А, литературу. И литературу тоже. Да, да. А где вы работаете? А, я работаю в школе. В школе. А, а кто а. вы? А я тоже учительница. Я тоже преподаю русский, да. но я не работаю в школе. Я работаю на телевидении. Очень хорошо. А, Линда, а кто вы по профессии? А, я библиотекар. А, а где вы работаете? Да, а, я работаю в библиотеке. В библиотеке. Да. А где эта библиотека? В школе? Да, в школе. В школе. Очень приятно, очень интересно. So the main idea of this dialogue was, где вы работаете? Where do you work? Кто вы по профессии? What do you do? So, did you like this one or did you like the, где вы живете, кто вы по национальности one? Из двух зол выбирай меньше. Choose the lesser of two evils, right? Хорошо. Uh, one more thing we need to talk about, and that is what we have done today. We have taken quite a bit of new vocabulary in today. That was nationalities, things of that nature. Review that. We have dealt with so-called prepositional case for в Москве, в России, в Далласе, in a particular place. We have even worked a little with so-called genitive case. Из Москвы, из России, out of, from Russia, from Moscow. Хорошо? Uh, кроме того, besides we dealt with some of the cultural issues. Hope you enjoyed that. Теперь давайте мы с вами поговорим о том, что вам нужно делать на следующий раз. Now let's talk about what you're gonna need to do for the next lesson, that is your homework. Go ahead and do pages 21 through 25 of the endless handout, which is coming to the end pretty soon. Write them out exactly the same way. Go ahead and practice the new vocabulary, practice the dialogues in class. Try to reenact them. Большое спасибо! На этом мы с вами заканчиваем. До свидания!
Здравствуйте! Всем привет! Ну что ж, давайте поговорим о том, что мы с вами сделали в прошлый раз. Let's talk about what we did last time. We went through where do you live, what do you do, where you from, кто вы по профессии, all of that good stuff. Took quite a bit of new vocabulary. And to reinforce all of that, we will listen to a dialogue. Before we do that, let me tell you what we're gonna do today. Today we will deal with quite a bit of grammar, actually. How exciting! We'll deal with prepositional case. That's what we use for location. Things like в Москве, в школе, in school, in Moscow, things of that nature, and also some direct object, so-called accusative case. That's when you study Russian, for example. Russian is the direct object of your studying it, or you read a book. The book is the direct object. Accusative case, you have to change feminine endings from a to u, ya to you, so you end up with ya chitayu knigu rather than kniga. And things of that nature. So you will see some new grammar. Well, kind of new. You've done things of that nature before last year. And also you will see some new vocabulary. Хорошо, there will be another saying, of course, some more culture. And uh, to get it started, go ahead and listen to the dialogue that deals with nationality and where do you live first. Here it is. Um, Мишель, а кто вы по национальности? Вы американка? Да, я американка. И вы? А вы? А, вы, а я русская. Да. Я по национальности русская. Хорошо. А вы, Линда? Я американка. И ваши родители американцы? И ваша бабушка и дедушка американцы? Um, нет. Um, моя бабушка Полка. А, Полька. Mm -hmm. а. Um, а моя дедушка. Дедушка. А, очень интересно. У вас в семье немцы, поляки и американцы. Очень интересно. А где вы живете, Мишел? Um, вы живете в Далласе? Да. Я живу в Далласе. А ваша семья тоже живет в Далласе? Нет, нет. Моя сестра живет в Чикаго. И моя брат живет в Атланте. Ваш брат живет в Атланте? Да. А, да. А понятно. Где? А я живу в Далласе, и мой муж, и мой сын тоже живут в Далласе. Но моя мама, и мой брат, и моя сестра живут в России, в Москве. А -а -а. Я из России. Я сама из России, из Москвы. Хорошо. А, Линда, а вы живете где? А, я живу... В Далласе, Вы жив, тоже живете в Далласе, как и Мишель. Да. А ваша семья тоже живет с вами в Далласе? Да. А, моя сестра... Ваша сестра oh. не живет с вами? Uh, uh, а где живет ваша сестра? А где живет ваша сестра? А, вот это А, да. Моя сестра живет... А, ваша сестра живет, но она тоже в Техасе. Да. А, понятно, понятно. Но это недалеко. So, having answered the questions such as кто вы по национальности, где вы живете, we can now go on and review кто вы по профессии, где вы работаете, what do you do, where do you work. We're going to look at the next dialogue, the one that you saw at the beginning. Actually, at the end of last lesson. Having looked at it, we'll go through it in detail and talk about some other things. Here's the dialogue. Мишель, можно вас спросить? Да, пожалуйста. Мишель, а кто вы по профессии? Я учительница. О, а что вы преподаете? А, я преподаю а, театр. Театр? Театр, а. да. Uh, русский, русский язык, английский. А. Uh, литературу. И литературу да. тоже. Да. А где вы работаете? Uh, я работаю в школе. В школе? 
А, а кто вы? А, я тоже учительница. Я тоже преподаю русский, да. но я не работаю в школе. Я работаю на телевидении. Очень хорошо. А, Линда, а кто вы по профессии? А, я библиотекар. А, а где вы работаете? Да, а, я работаю в библиотеке. В библиотеке? Да. А где эта библиотека? В школе? Да, в школе. В школе. Очень приятно. Очень интересно. Хорошо. Я думаю, что мы можем с вами назвать этот диалог «меньшее зло». I think we can call this dialogue the lesser evil, considering that it's quite a bit shorter and actually quite a bit easier than «Где вы живете?», «Кто вы по национальности?» диалог. Let's go ahead and take this one apart, look at it in detail. Можно вас спросить? Можно, is it possible? May I? Uh, when you want something, it's enough to simply say можно? Is it okay? May I? Можно вас спросить? May I ask you something? Да, пожалуйста. Yes, please. It's kind of like, yeah, go ahead. Да, пожалуйста. Три, четыре. Да, пожалуйста. And next. Кто вы по профессии? Literally, who you by profession? Это значит, what that means is, what do you do? Кто вы по профессии? Три, четыре. Кто вы по профессии? И ответ, and the answer is, я учительница. Я учительница. I'm a teacher. It's a woman saying it, so she's using a feminine form of it. Хорошо. Next question and answer are, а что вы преподаете? And what do you teach? Преподаете goes with вы and means teach. So, what do you teach? And the answer, я преподаю театр русский, meaning русский язык, и литературу. Let's start at the end. Литературу, literature, литература became литературу once you started teaching it or studying it. It's a direct object, change R to U. Ruski doesn't change, doesn't have an R there at the end, and neither does teatr. And uh, at the beginning of that sentence, we've got я преподаю, I teach. So я преподаю, вы преподаете. As you probably remember, verbs, the forms of the verbs depend on the person, the pronoun, or the noun that they go with. Очень хорошо. The next question and answer, and then another question go like that. А где вы работаете? And where do you work? Работаете. Вы работаете. Три, четыре. А где вы работаете? And the answer, я работаю в школе. I work in school. I work at a school. Хорошо, so школа, turning into a location from just a noun, has to have that а replaced with a е. So в школе, at school. А кто вы? And who are you? Meaning, кто вы по профессии? What do you do? And she answers, я тоже учительница. Учительница, три, четыре. Учительница. Я тоже учительница. I'm also a teacher. Я тоже преподаю русский, or русский язык. I also teach Russian. And more, she also says, но я работаю не в школе, а на телевидении. A bunch of is there in the way it sounds. So, Телевидении. Television. На телевидении. On television. At a TV studio or something like that. So she says, Я работаю не в школе. I work not in school, а на телевидении. But on TV. At a TV studio. Remember when you say not A but B, you always use these two. Ни blank А. Blank. Хорошо? The whole phrase once again. Не на телевидении, 
не в школе, etc. Хорошо, let's go to the next one. А кто вы по профессии? What do you do? Who are you by profession? Хорошо. Я библиотекарь. Библи, kind of like Bible, Biblio, must be something with books. Библиотека, library, библиотекарь, library in. So, я библиотекарь. I'm a librarian. Очень хорошо. And the next question there is, а где вы работаете? And where do you work? Well, like, uh, I guess, библиотеки. Я работаю в библиотеке. I work in a library. Didn't come as a surprise, did it? And then finally, next question. А где эта библиотека? And where is that library? В школе? At a school? Да, в школе. Yes, at a school. And the conclusion to it is очень интересно. That's very interesting. Хорошо. Well, that's all of it. This dialogue definitely wasn't too bad, and there isn't that much new material in there. However, we're going to expand on it. And since the subject of school was brought up, we will uh, kind of beat it into the ground here. Here's what we're gonna do. When you study in high school, there are certain terms you use for teacher or student, and uh, when you study in college, there are some other terms you use. We'll look through that. We'll look through some of the ways you say I study something and also she teaches, he teaches, etc. Хорошо. So, when you study in high school, which is в школе. В школе. Take a look at it at the bottom right there. В школе. In school. Meaning high school. You are going to be called either школьник, if you're a guy, or школьница if you are a girl. So, школьник, школьница, школа being school, this kind of sounds like a schoolnik, right? And a female schoolnik. If that helps you remember, that's great. Хорошо. Or maybe you could be called ученик or ученица. Хорошо. And the teacher in a школа is going to be учитель. Хорошо. If it's a guy or учительница. If it's a girl, once again, учитель. Учить, to teach. So, учитель, teacher. Учительница, female teacher. Хорошо. Later on, you could be studying at a college. And uh, that would be в институте. If it's kind of a small college, more focused. If it's a big place, it's going to be в университете. Okay? That's another possibility right there. В университете. Очень хорошо. That's where you're gonna be called either student, if you're a guy, or студентка. Хорошо. Usually the terms student and студентка are not used for high school. Хорошо. The teacher at a university is called something really long and ugly. So, university instructor, college instructor is a преподаватель. Let's take it from the end with a til. Then, ватель. Даватель, подаватель, преподаватель. Say it once again. Преподаватель with me. Преподаватель, преподаватель. Хорошо. This looks pretty long. However, if it's a female university, oh, that is pretty long. If it's a female university instructor, it's gonna be Преподавательница. Try that just for grins. Преподавательница. Три, четыре. Преподавательница. Okay? Why is this useful to us? Well, a part of that преподавательница is a преподавать. That is to teach. And that's what we use both for high school or university. Хорошо. Let's take a look at that преподавать verb in high school or college the teacher teaches with this verb преподавать and the way it conjugates is я преподаю 3-4 я преподаю ты преподаешь ты преподаешь он или она преподает мы 
преподаем. We teach, right? Вы преподаете. You teach, они преподают. They teach. Очень хорошо. All right. Now, what one teaches is going to be a direct object. We're going to put it in so-called accusative case. That means watch out for the as and us at the, as and yas at the end of those nouns. For example, if you study физика, physics or something like that, turn it into физику. Хорошо. If it's something like Russian, however, you don't have to change much. Русский will just stay there. So, I teach Russian. Я преподаю русский. Direct object, no as to change to us. Keep the русский exactly the way it is. Хорошо? But if it's physics, then you will have физика turning into физику. Хорошо? А become зум. So, она преподает физику. Очень хорошо. And also, in high school or college, a student is going to study a particular subject with the verb изучать. Take a look at that whole bunch there. Я изучаю. I study plus a direct object. Like, I study Russian. Я изучаю русский язык. Три, четыре. Я изучаю русский язык. You study. Ты изучаешь. As in, what do you study? Что ты изучаешь? Хорошо? Он, она изучает. Мы изучаем. We study. Like, we study English. Мы изучаем английский. 3-4. Мы изучаем английский. Вы изучаете. You study. Они изучают. They study. Очень хорошо. So, once again, what one studies is a direct object, just like with teaching. If there is an I at the end of the noun, turn it to U. Я, turn it to you. Leave everything exactly the same way. So, if you study Russian, you will have Я изучаю русский язык. Хорошо? Take a look at it. Я изучаю русский. I study Russian. Хорошо? If it's a noun that has an I in it, like физика, You'll have я изучаю физику, а turn to у. Хорошо. All right, let's take a look at a whole list of subjects that you could be studying in high school. Английский. Right there at the heading, we've got мы изучаем, we study. And then direct objects. Мы изучаем английский, we study English. Мы изучаем математику, we study math. Mathematics. Da? So here, notice that there is an other turn to U. Mathematica became Mathematiku. Okay, we study history. Me izuchaim historiu, literature, literaturu, and chemistry. Chemiu. Uh, by the way, computer science is going to be something like which is little technica, but we won't go there. Хорошо. So. That was just a little grammar. Let's go ahead and try to break up the monotony of talking about school and grammar and things of that nature with some more of gestures and just the way Russians function as far as dealing with people, not necessarily speaking, but just how they gesture, what they do, etc. Хорошо. If you want to say that you don't know something, this works, right? Works beautifully in Russian too. Я не знаю. Я не знаю. Хорошо. Okay, another way to do it would be just Я не знаю. So, shake your head. Я не знаю. Хорошо. Another, fra uh, another thing that you don't see much in American culture is this. <sighs> kind of moving your head a little bit, sort of scratching your neck. That also probably means I don't know. I'm not really sure. Okay. Try not to make a kind of silly face when you do that, otherwise it kind of looks a little bit uh, demented, maybe. Хорошо. Okay. And, of course, the saying of the lesson is coming right at you, right here. It is ломать не делать. So, ломать не делать. To break is not to make. That's something that you will probably remember when you do travel to Russia. The idea of socialism in Russia has created a whole different culture. 
since the state used to own most of the stuff, so to say, you know, buildings, machinery, it doesn't really belong to you. You know, there is a public phone, does it belong to you? Well, no. So, do you care if it's broken? No. Do you care if somebody breaks it? Not really. So, there's an awful lot of vandalism in Russia. Uh, quite a bit of graffiti and stuff like that. And basically that refers to that particular phrase, as far as I'm concerned. It's the ломat не делать. You know, to break something is not to make it quite a bit easier. That's the idea. Хорошо. Okay. So, in this lesson we have done quite a bit of new things. We have reviewed some grammar. We have looked at prepositional case. В школе, in school, в библиотеке, at the library, на телевидении и at the television, etc. By the way, the difference between в and then prepositional case for the location and на plus prepositional and location. Do you remember anything about that? It doesn't really have anything to do with at or on or in. Go ahead and simply remember that you can use this thing as a clue. If you're dealing with sort of a 3D object, like a building or something like that, school, university, uh, library, you will probably be using в. Okay, so in school, в школе. Okay, at the university. В университете. I'm using в to say at, in, same thing. Okay, at the library. В библиотеке. Okay, if it's more of an open place, you're gonna be using на. Хорошо? Something like, uh, you may remember площадь, square. If you don't, don't worry, we're simply reviewing the point, not the vocabulary. So, on the square, flat space, no buildings that you're getting into, you're gonna use на, на площади. Uh, or, for example, if you are at a lesson in class, is class a building? Well, kind of, but the actual class, the lecture is an activity. So for that you're gonna say на. Class is урок, then in class is на уроке. На уроке. Хорошо. So use в for 3D objects, buildings and such, countries, something with borders. No one use на for flat surfaces, на столе, on the table, on the desk. Хорошо. На лекции, at a lecture, that's an activity, not a building. Хорошо? Okay, of course there are some crazies that will throw you off and you won't really know every time which to use. Хорошо? Those are the, exactly the same ones that you should be using to say that you're going there as well. If you're going to school, the destination, the place you're going to, is going to be in accusative case, like a direct object. Start out with школа and you'll go to school в школу. Хорошо? Just like we did with I study физика. Я изучаю физику. I go to school, я иду в школу. The reason why I'm bringing that up is that it's the same в that we use. So, в школу, to school. But if you're going to a class, урок, you're not gonna say в урок. You're not getting into the class. It's not something to get in. It's на. Okay? So you'd say на урок. Хорошо? Спасибо. Так, кроме того, что еще мы с вами сделали? Много поработали с винительным падежом. We worked a lot with accusative case. Studying a subject, putting it in a direct object form. Я изучаю химию, математику, литературу. A bunch of us and use, if there are us and yes to begin with. Okay? Хорошо. Let's go ahead and talk about your homework now. You need to write out five more pages of the endless handout that is rapidly coming to an end. Pages 26 through 30. Do them exactly the same way again, only write on the left-hand side where you have the text 
go ahead and write it out exactly the way they ask you to. What you see is what you should write there. Хорошо? And leave the right hand side for me to deal with what you wrote there on the left so that I could put some corrections on the right hand side. Give it back to you. And then have you turn it back to me. Correct it. Хорошо? That's what you need to do. One more thing that you needed to take care of is the vocabulary. Go ahead and look through the vocab sheet that you got for this lesson. But also take a look at all of your previous vocab sheets for lessons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and the 6th lesson. We are going to have a little bit of a review quiz that will let you and me know whether the review that we have gone through using the dialogues and things of that nature worked well. Okay, so review the vocabulary and also go ahead and do some work with the dialogues. Not only the dialogue that you heard in this lesson, this thing with where do you work, what do you do, try to reenact this one and also some of the others. I think that's one of the best things you can do in class. Go ahead and break up into groups of two, three students or something like that and uh, try to go into где вы работаете, where do you work? Я не работаю, I don't work. Я изучаю русский язык, I study Russian. Just something that will actually be applicable to you personally. Хорошо? Or things like откуда вы? Where are you from? Я из Техаса. Я американец. I'm American. I'm from Texas. Хорошо? So, deal with the things that are useful to you, but don't forget about the quiz. Don't forget about vocabulary and those quick grammar points. I wish you the best of luck reviewing, and I will see you later. До свидания.